Okay, in this video we want to continue using our three trig ratios in right angled triangles, so using our soccer toa, um, but this time not finding side lengths, instead finding angles. So this introduces a new step, okay, the process is still the same. Look at your information in the question. Which of the three trig ratios are relevant to this information? Substitute the information into the question. But what we'll find once we do that is it will be the angle. So the thing inside the sine or cos or tan that is unknown. And so therefore, we're going to need a way to solve an equation that looks something like this. Sine of an unknown angle equals a number. Okay, so we need an extra step in our solution process. So as with any equation, we solve equations by performing inverse operations to both sides of the equation. Okay, so for example, when we are solving 2x equals 7, we identify that x is being multiplied by 2. The opposite or inverse operation to multiplication is division. So we know that if we divide this left hand side by 2 we'll get x on its own and so we do the same to the right hand side okay similarly if we have x plus 7 equals 8 okay we know that the opposite of adding 7 or the inverse operation to addition is subtraction and so we can cancel out if you like that plus 7 by subtracting 7 and so we subtract 7 from both sides to end up with x equals 1 Similarly, if we have the square root of x equals 3, okay, then we know that we want to do the inverse operation to square rooting. What is the opposite of square rooting? And that is to square both sides, and so we get x equals 9. So when we have an equation like sine of theta equals 0.5, theta, we're trying to solve for theta, okay, let me call it x, so sine of x equals 0.5, we're trying to solve for x. x is currently inside a sine function. Now remember, sine is an actual operation. It's not, we're not multiplying by sine. So we don't solve x here by dividing by sine. That's like saying we need to divide by the square root. Okay, square root of what? It's, a, it's an operation you can't divide by another operation. So we don't want to divide by sine. We want to know what is the opposite to doing sine to something. Okay, and the opposite of that is quite literally called inverse sine, opposite sine, and we have special notation for that. Okay, it's called it's when we write sine to the power of negative one, and you'll see that um, notation for inverse functions a lot over the next two years. So we're going to do inverse sine to both sides of the equation. Okay, and when we do that inverse sine and sine, they are opposite things and they cancel each other out in the same way that dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2 cancel each other out. Adding 7 and subtracting 7 cancel each other out. Squaring and square rooting cancel each other out. Sine and inverse sine cancel each other out. Okay, And so we just get left with x on the left hand side and inverse sine of 0.5 on the right hand side. And our CAS, in our trig button, we've got our inverse sine, cosine and tangent here. So if we did inverse sine of 0.5, we would find that x is 30, and it's in degrees because my CAS is in degree mode. Okay? If my CAS was in radian mode, it would give me a different answer, and that would be the angle in radians rather than in degrees. So again, being in degrees is still really important here. Okay, so we want to use these inverse trig ratios. So let's just do some very simple without any triangles. If we want to find the value of theta, correct to two decimal places in each of the following. So cos of theta is equal to 0.8. So we want to do the opposite of cos to both sides, which is inverse cos. When we do that to the left-hand side, we'll just get theta left on its own. And so we also need to do it on the right-hand side. And we find that theta is inverse cos of 0.8. And so we go to our CAS and we go to inverse cos of 0.8. Control enter for a decimal. And we want two decimal places, so we find that our angle is about 36.87 degrees. In this uh, part B, sine of theta equals two thirds. So we need to do the opposite of sine, which is inverse sine. So we can do inverse sine to both sides of the equation, which is going to leave us with theta on its own on the left. And we are doing inverse sine of two thirds, so that we have done the same thing to both sides. 
in my case, inverse sine, two thirds, control enter, it is approximately, to two decimal places, 41.81 degrees. Okay, now let's add a layer before that, so we actually have to get to that equation with the unknown angle first. Um, okay, so again, we've got two examples here. Let's focus on question um, three. Sorry, that should be labeled A and B under example two. Anyway, so we're trying to find this angle, so therefore we need to talk about the other two sides relative to that angle. So this three centimeters is opposite that angle, and the six centimeters is opposite the right angle, so that makes it the hypotenuse. So we've got opposite and hypotenuse, so we're going to need to use sine. So sine of my unknown angle is equal to, we should write degrees on that, um, is equal to the opposite length, which is 3, over the hypotenuse length, which is 6. Now you can simplify the 3 6 to 1 half if you want to, that's fine, but it's not the final answer, so it really doesn't matter if we don't simplify at this point. So now we want to get theta on its own. Theta is currently inside the sine function. The opposite of that, un to undo that, we'll need to use inverse sine on the left-hand side, and so we must then also write inverse sine on the right-hand side. So we need inverse sine, whether you wrote 3 sixths or 1 half, doesn't matter. Inverse sine of 3 sixths or 1 half is exactly, so I'm not going to write my approximate, is exactly 30 degrees. Okay, question four. Again, this is the angle I'm interested in, which makes this the opposite side, and it makes this the adjacent side. Okay, so we're going to need tan here. So tan of the angle, tan of the unknown angle theta, is equal to the opposite length, which is root 10, over the adjacent length, which is 10. We're going to need to use inverse tan to get theta on its own. So we're going to take inverse tan of both sides. That will cancel out the tan on the left and leave us with theta. And we need inverse tan of root 10 over 10. Let's put that in our calculator. Inverse tan, control divide, square root is control squared. So square root of 10 over 10, and control enter, uh, two decimal places, so that is approximately 17.55 degrees. Okay, let's add in one extra layer where we now need to first construct the triangle so that we can then construct the equation so that we can then solve the equation. So a skateboard ramp is 5 metres long and rises a vertical distance of 2 metres. What angle does the ramp make with the horizontal ground? Okay, so we've got, oh, sorry, we've got horizontal ground, we've got a ramp, we've got the ramp is 5 metres long and it rises a vertical height of 2 metres. Okay, vertical and horizontal, so we've got right angle happening in there. We want to know what angle does the ramp make with the ground. So ramp and ground, where they meet, what is the angle here? Okay, so 2 is opposite theta, so that's um, the opposite side. 5 is the hypotenuse, and so we're going to need sine. So sine of my unknown angle is equal to opposite, which is 2, over hypotenuse, which is 5. Getting theta on its own is going to require inverse sine, we apply inverse sine to both sides of the equation. That eliminates the sine on the left-hand side. And we'll get inverse sine of 2 fifths on the right-hand side. Approximately equal to, we want our answer to the nearest degree. So inverse sine of 2 fifths. Control enter. Right to the nearest degree, that's going to be 24 degrees. It's quite a steep ramp, actually. Fortunately, it's a skateboard ramp, not for someone in wheelchair. <laughs> uh, example four, an isosceles triangle. So what's an isosceles triangle? So isosceles triangle, two equal angles, two equal side lengths. Okay. Those two are equal, those two angles are equal. Could be wide and thin, those two are equal, those two angles at the base are equal. Okay, so um, an isosceles triangle has a base length of 10 and the other two sides are each of length 6 centimetres. Find the angles in the triangle, giving your answers correct to the nearest degree. Okay, so let's think about what we've got here. Base length of 10, other two sides are 6. Okay, 6, 
6, and 10. Everything's in centimeters. We want to find all the angles. There's three angles here. However, two of those angles are the same. Okay, We know that these two angles are the same. So once we've got one of those, we can then use the fact that all the angles in the triangle add to 180 to find the third one. Now again, Sokotoa is only relevant in right-angled triangles, so we need a right-angled triangle. Isosceles triangles are nice because if we break them down the middle, we get two congruent, exactly the same, right-angled triangles. Okay, So that means this is 5, this we don't know, but the hypotenuse is 6. So we should be able to find this angle in here. Okay, so um, 5 is the adjacent side and 6 is the hypotenuse, so we're going to need cos. So we know that cos of theta degrees is equal to adjacent, which is 5, over hypotenuse, which is 6. Taking inverse cos of both sides tells us that theta is inverse cos of 5 sixths. And putting that into our calculator, inverse cos of 5 sixths. Uh, to the nearest degree is 34 degrees. Okay, so that means that this is also 34 degrees over here, this is 34, and so we can then find the angle at the top. Let's give that a name so we can call it something, I'll call that alpha. So we know that alpha is going to be 180 degrees minus two lots of 34 degrees. Again, let's be precise, so let's use our exact answer in our CAS, there's no reason not to. 180 minus 2 times this, which leaves us with, to the nearest uh, degree, um, uh, now actually I've created a rounding error here, because if I round them all to the nearest degree, 34 and 34 and 113, it doesn't actually add up to 180. So I am going to stick with the rounded value of 34 in this particular instance. Um, so I'm going to pretend that I did that as 180 minus 2 times 34 times 34. Um, in an exam or a test, this question wouldn't ask for them to the nearest degree because it creates that rounding error. It might have asked for them to, sorry, I've done that, typed that calculation in wrong. Um, it might have asked for them to one decimal place or something to avoid the rounding error um, or else it would have been clear how they want you to use your subsequent answers. We possibly also would have accepted both combinations, 34, 34 and 113 is also correct um, if you individually round each answer. Okay, so I'm going to stick with using the 34 though, so we get a nice sum that adds up to um, 180 degrees. So therefore, let's answer our question. Uh, the angles in the triangle are 34 degrees, 34 degrees, and 112 degrees. Okay, so again, you've got some work to do. Um, the first two questions in the little building understanding exercise and then um, the remaining questions from exercise 4B.